Is there a difference between matcha versus green tea? Technically not, but the true answer is a bit more complicated than that. In this video, we're going to compare matcha versus green tea to see the differences and similarities between the two. Let's get started. So before we compare matcha versus green tea, it's important to clear up one thing. Matcha is actually a type of green tea. The definition of a green tea is a tea that's unoxidized. This sets it apart from black teas, which are fully oxidized, and oolong teas that are partially oxidized. Like other green teas, matcha begins its life as leaves on the Camellia sinensis plant. This plant, also simply called the tea plant, is an evergreen, flowering shrub native to Southeast Asia. All true teas need to come from this plant. If the leaves come from a different plant, it is not considered a green tea or even a type of tea at all. Once the tea leaves are picked, the tea will begin to oxidize naturally over time and eventually they will turn into a black tea. In order to stop this process, the enzymes that cause oxidation have to be deactivated and this is done by applying heat to the tea leaves. In China, the heat is applied by turning the leaves in a large hot pan but in Japan, it's more common to steam the tea leaves. This is one of the main reasons why Chinese green tea and Japanese green tea taste so different. Similar to other types of Japanese green tea, the leaves used to make matcha are also steamed and dried. The big difference between matcha versus green tea like sencha comes down to the next phases in the production process. When we compare matcha versus green tea in loose leaf form like sencha, there are two main stages in the production that make it unique. The first is the removal of the stems, and the second is the grinding of the leaves in a large stone mill. This this fine powder is then mixed directly into the water. The biggest difference between matcha versus green tea like sencha is that matcha is mixed directly into water, whereas most teas are infused into water. This leads to big differences in both the flavor and in the health benefits, both of which we will discuss next. So when you compare the flavor of matcha versus green tea like sencha, you'll notice that the flavor of matcha is much more intense. This is because you're getting more of the leaf with each sip. When you grind the tea leaf into a powder and mix it into water, you're magnifying the taste of the tea. This is why you can't make matcha out of normal green tea leaves. Matcha has to be made from the top leaves of the tea plant. They have to be shaded for a long period of time, and they have to have their stems removed prior to grinding, all of which improves the flavor. Matcha also has a much thicker consistency, and it tends to be made of this savory or umami flavor. It also can have more of this steamed vegetable flavor profile that's common in other types of green teas. Sencha on the other hand tends to be a bit more subtle. It has a translucent color, a thinner texture, and a light sweetness. In addition to there being a difference in taste, there's also a difference between matcha versus sencha when it comes to health benefits. So as we said before, the taste of matcha is like a much more intense version of green tea. And the same could be said for the health benefits. Because you're consuming the entire leaf, you're getting more of the health properties within the leaf. Think about when you brew a loose leaf tea. You must be extracting relatively little from the tea leaves because it seems like you throw out the same amount of leaves that you started with. With matcha, you start out with a few grams of powder and then you drink all of it. What about the antioxidants in matcha? There's an often used statistic that matcha contains something like 136 times the antioxidants as a regular green tea. While this is very far from the truth, there is a big difference between the antioxidants and matcha matcha versus green tea, likely closer to 10 times. The most common antioxidants in green tea are catechins, which have been credited with helping everything from weight loss to immune support. These antioxidants may be healthy, but they come with a slightly astringent flavor. This is why we don't recommend brewing green teas with a high temperature water, as it extracts more of these catechins and therefore more bitterness. If you ever leave a tea brewing for too long, you will experience this firsthand, as the tea will become extremely bitter. Because matcha is mixed directly into water, you're getting all the catechins in the tea, and that's why most matcha is bitter. If you want a better drinking experience, you have to go for a premium matcha, like the matcha washimine, which is still high in antioxidants, but it's balanced out by a smooth flavor profile. In addition to having more antioxidants, matcha also contains more theanine and caffeine. Theanine is thought to buffer some of the negative side effects of caffeine. It's thought to slow the absorption of caffeine, and it helps you avoid things like the jitters and the crash, which normally accompany a caffeinated beverage. Theanine is also thought to induce a calming effect on the brain. That's why tea drinkers report having this calm, alert feeling that lasts throughout the day. It is also thought to stimulate alpha brainwave activity, the same brainwave stimulated during long periods of meditation. The high theanine content in matcha comes from the long shading process of the tea, which is why the theanine is much higher in matcha versus green tea. So when we say green tea, normally what comes to mind is not matcha. There is good reason for this, as matcha is very different from your average green tea when it comes to production, taste, and health benefits. I hope this guide has helped you understand the differences between matcha versus green tea. If you'd like to try some matcha for yourself, you can find a great selection at neoteas.com. After traveling around Japan for the past few years, we've met with dozens of different tea farmers and sampled hundreds of different matcha teas. We've ultimately decided on a small handful of our favorites, and we're so excited to share them with all of you. Try a few out for yourself and let us know what you think. 
Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video. It would really mean a lot to us if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel to see more tea videos in the future. If you have any questions about matcha or green tea in general, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.